Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Ten Mistakes That Church Boards Make. That's what we're going to be talking today about on this latest edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And I'm Phil Thompson, and we come to you uh, every week, and we uh, are a company called JSL Solutions, which uh, actually has three products. We have StreamingChurch.tv, ChurchAppLive.com, and MyFlock.com. All right, so streaming video, mobile apps, and MyFlock is websites, church management, Content management, yes, all and rolled the into one. The very first social networking within the Christian world. The very first. The very first, uh, yes. Nicely done. That was uh, 2000, 2001. Five right? years before um, Facebook. You know, Mark Zuckerberg was would have been in about fourth grade or so, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, he wasn't making any money back then. <laughs> <laughs> now he makes lots of money. Yes. Unlike he, us. He caught and passed us up by far. All right, just a little bit. So uh, Steve and I come to you, as I said, every week, and we are a tech company, but we are very much involved in churches, ministries, primarily is what we do uh, with our company, as well as our personal lives. We are involved in our churches, have been involved for many, many years. Steve's been involved in leadership, different church boards, which is what we're talking about today. And I have too, as a, as a, gosh, as a volunteer, executive pastor, senior pastor, Executive pastor, again, part-time, a little mm-hmm. church I work with. So we, we have lots of fun working with churches, and part of our purpose of doing this is to help you as a volunteer, you know, a leader in your church, a pastor, you know, we want to help you. All that's right. really what our heart's all about. So that's why we do these things. And So, so we've got 10 mistakes that church boards can make. We do, and uh, we're not going to talk so much about tech today. I mean, we obviously talk a lot about tech stuff in our podcast, but not today. Today, it's leadership stuff. So yeah, let's talk about these very quickly. Uh, These are things that I have found have been problems, mistakes over, I have been involved in church boards since the late 1970s. Mm. I'm really old and you are not too far behind, right? Not far behind at all, no. Involved in church boards for a long time. So these are things we have found to be mistakes, stumbling blocks, things that kind of gum up the process that can hinder your church, hinder your ministry, mm-hmm. inhibit it from really growing and thriving. These are 10 mistakes that we have observed. So the first one is voting on church leaders based on popularity. All right. So, so this is the makeup of the board, right? Or yeah. or any leadership position. And, and I, I realize we're speaking again to different cultures out there, different church cultures, uh, different churches, you know, are, listening to us, if you're involved, some of your churches do things differently. Some of you appoint leaders differently. Some of you have members vote on that. But if you're voting for a church leader solely based on how popular they are, you are asking for potential trouble. Right, exactly. Because you really should be looking at people that are are gifted in leadership, gifted in certain areas. And of course, then there's this, what we would call biblical qualifications uh, that, that you can look at in the scriptures for elders and deacons and all that stuff and, right. and the epistles. Yeah, and um, as we get into this, I mean, some of these things, you've been a part of a, a church split, right? Yes, and I, I have uh, been part of a, a church split back yeah. back in the day. Yeah, and and actually, you were one recently. I was? We didn't call it a split. With, oh, oh, you're that's right. That's what it you're, was. Yes, that is, that is true. Yeah, Not that too was, long ago. That, yes, that's true. I didn't recognize that as a about, split, but it really, I guess it really was a split. Really what it was, yes. Yeah, but I was referring to a split that back when I was living in California, we had a church that did, I mean, it was a very clear split. And a lot of the things, the problems that were in place could be attributed to some of the things that were going over here today. Yeah. And we had, we definitely had some leaders, there were some people in leadership positions that were, um, they were very popular and very strong personalities, but, but they didn't have the appropriate giftings or biblical authority. So they were, they, they rose to a position of authority, but they really, looking back, 
the mistake that was made is they never really should have been in that position. Right. So that's when you when you vote on people or you appoint people at least just based on popularity, you're asking for potential problems. Right. Exactly. Right. So as we continue to talk about mistakes that uh, church boards sometimes make, let's go on to number two, and that would be having a board that views its primary role as holding the pastor accountable rather than empowering that pastor to lead. All right. So the the board would be somewhat of a choke or a cross check on the pastor rather than equipping that pa- that pastor to yeah, lead. Looking over that pastor's shoulder, second guessing the pastor all the time, kind of getting nitpicky. It, it right. can turn into that. Questioning their the decisions and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, I, and some of this is, some of this probably should be spelled out in your, uh, uh, in your documents of your church on on kind of like the roles right. of the board, the roles of the staff. If you don't have something like that, let me know. I'll, I'll, I can provide you something that our church uses, which is actually pretty good. Because a lot of times they step on each other, which shouldn't be. So you, if you understand the role of the board or church leaders or yeah. elders. And we're going to get into the whole accountability structure with, as we go through some of yeah, those Yeah, we can others. get into some of that, yeah. Yeah, so, but there, I mean, the... the the pastor is accountable to the board, yes. but the the board shouldn't. I mean, it should be acting in a way that will enable the leadership right. of the in a, of the church, right? In a positive way, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're not saying. I'm not saying the pastor just has free run. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is 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 if the board sees their their main role is, hey, we're going to keep this guy accountable, that he dots every I and crosses every T right. to the point where it's uh, micromanaging him, right. so to speak, or her. You right. see, there is a balance there. There needs to be accountability. Right. But, and there's but, there's parallels in the business world too, right? I mean, right. The, the, the senior pastor would be the role of the, the CEO of the company. You know, the board, the CEO is responsible or is accountable to the board, right. but the board needs to let the CEO run the business, you know, the way right. they're gifted. That that's kind of how our church operates in in in, in a way. Uh, now there are other churches that operate a little differently, but still the, everybody has roles, and those need to be defined. And so whatever the whatever whatever way your church runs its church, you know, with its board or elders, leaders, whatever you want to call that, there needs to be defined parameters mm-hmm. and 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 boundaries, so to speak, so that you know people aren't trying to get in everybody's face. Right, and there's a, uh, I shouldn't bring this up, but there's, I read a a book recently, but I cannot remember the title of the book, but it's all about um, how boards should, you know, the role of boards and how uh, an effective board would work. It was the most dry reading I've ever done. It was kind of a requirement for all the board members to get through this thing. But it was really healthy in how it structured the role of the board versus the pastor or the, you know, the, the, the leader. Yeah. Well, there are different ways to do it, but there needs they need to be really spelled out. So moving along here, um, point number three on mistakes that sometimes church boards make, thinking everybody in the church should have one voice on every single decision. Yes, or a voice on every decision. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So and you've thinking experienced that, that too, right? Yes. Yeah, you don't want to make this, uh, well, let's put it to a democratic vote and see what the congregation thinks. I mean, the board is a, is a leadership team as much as the, right. the senior pastor is. Yeah. So the board needs to make leadership decisions. It's not a, it's not a democracy where let's, you know, see how many vote I and how many vote nay across the whole congregation and see which way it goes. Yeah. We're talking about the whole, the whole membership thing. Here, here's the deal. And here's why I say this is not a good thing you know, is, is because not everybody's the same level mature, mature wise, spiritually mature, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So there are some decisions that, that I may not be equipped to make, but somebody that's a little older and wiser, or at least has more experience might have better resources to make that decision. Right. Exactly. So it's not like we're putting people in certain levels you know, oh, you're not worth anything. So we're just saying because of of the maturity aspect of things, some people aren't qualified yeah, to and lead. There, and there's <laughs> some healthy decisions that may be um, not directly beneficial to the existing church body, right? Uh, but they're necessary <laughs> steps in the growth of the church. Yeah, absolutely. So it wouldn't be healthy to you know get the 
right. get everyone's vote. Yeah. And again, as some of as we go through this little list here, some of you might disagree with us on some things. You're you're more than welcome to let us know what you think. Support at streaming church dot tv is our email address it's one of them right. and we'd love to hear from you all right so where are we at here number four all right go ahead so having more than one board or committee to create checks and balances uh yeah i i don't think it's a great idea although i will bend on that a little bit because sometimes if you're if you've got a complicated financial uh, system for whatever reason you might need to have some people Maybe that are a part of that leadership team. Uh, that yeah, that can work over on the side on some things and then bring it to the yeah. I think it's, it's healthy to to have a board that has you know the treasurer or the financial person represented okay. because yeah, it's that'd be a good it's point. Yeah. yeah it's going to be difficult to make good decisions without that financial visibility. Right. right. So I think it's a one of the key roles I think is you want on that board is a. A uh, spiritually gifted and mature person that is also really in tune with the finances. You know, uh, for a long time, in fact, when I worked with your pastor, we just had one leadership team and we handled everything, the finances, everything. I noticed when I came back here from my little excursion in Kansas that he had two different. He had a he had a financial. What did, what what did you guys call it? That you had the leadership team and then you had oh, a financial. We had a, we had. Because well, we you were on the financial thing. Yes. Weren't you? We were the we were considered the board, and then okay. there's a set of elders that okay. was the elders. Okay. And then there was you know the church leadership, the, those okay. on staff. Right. But but I, I at first I kind of thought, why do you have two different things? But then I could see, especially with you, the building program that you guys were involved in, and and when I was gone, I could see where. And then the, with the church I'm helping with right now. Uh, we have gotten really bogged down at times with some of the financial stuff, and uh, uh, we just have one board. But I've often thought, you know, if I could just take two or three of these guys and have them really kind of zero in on the finances and then bring us information right? instead of so, spending the whole time talking about something, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, but I mean, back on this point, of you don't want to create a scenario where there's competing leadership groups. Yeah, one decides this way, and they've got fifty percent of the vote. And these other, yeah. you, right. if you're going to have these leadership teams, you want to have a clear structure in the decision making right. process. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Have we have we lost anybody yet? I hope <laughs> not. Let's move on here. Point number five: giving the board oversight over more than one person. So this is again, some of you may disagree with this, but I really believe that the only person who should be accountable to the board is really the senior pastor. Uh, so if you, in other words, you have the senior pastor and maybe he, you have two or three or four staff members. All right. The problem with that is if, if everybody's accountable to that board, uh, then you get people stepping on everybody's toes. Right. My opinion is the senior pastor should work with his staff. Right. And, and, and his staff is accountable to the senior pastor and the senior pastor is accountable to the board. That's my opinion. Yeah. I think that's, that's a healthy setup. And I get it. It's mirrored in business as well. Right. I and mean, you want the CEO's leadership team responsible to the CEO. You know, they're indirectly accountable to the board, but the CEO right. is the, the key guy. Yeah, I, I when I was, you know, I'm helping out this church on the weekends. And, uh, you know, I, I started to have some people from the board start to talk to me about things. I'm going, wait a minute. And I, <laughs> I'm not really accountable to you, you know, <laughs> talk to you. And if you see something in my life that you feel like needs correction, I'll be glad to hear it from you. But as far as why I'm doing what I'm doing here, you know, that's the senior pastor has directed me to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you need to talk to the senior pastor if you don't like the way, you know, right. I'm doing something. That's what I'm getting at. So right. you know, that makes any sense. All right, moving along here. Uh, point number six, what's the six point we've got? In? So having a board that spends most of his time rehashing reports from what <laughs> happened in the past or what's happening today, rather than planning and praying for what happens in the future. I, I had this experience. I don't. There may be people listening to this podcast that go to my church, and if so, I'm sorry. But I, when I first got involved with, with this leadership team about two years ago now, uh, this drove me nuts. They were just they had their heads uh, looking at paperwork from you know whatever, and and we weren't forward thinking. We weren't strategically thinking. All we were looking at was, 
you know, what, what's going on with the money and why are we missing $40 here? Why did you spend $10 over budget? I mean, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, guys, you gotta, you know, I understand finances are important. Certain things are important, but you can't spend the whole time. You've got to be thinking ahead. You've got to right. be talking about what's the future of the church. How can we, you know, look to the future, right. and empower the staff and, reach people you get that's what i'm getting at so yeah. if your board's doing this uh it's time to kind of it's probably a very common trap I it's think, very common. a lot of people fall into it's very common and 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 so if that's happening there needs to be a reset and what i mean by that is you know somebody's got to sit down and talk about okay here's what we should be doing <laughs> and 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 again it's real important that you have i can't think of the th i should have looked this up before i started this podcast but there's there's a document that we use that kind of keeps us on track mm -hmm. And it defines, here's what the board should be doing. Here's what the senior pastor should be doing. The staff should be doing. And, and, and if you have something that's clearly in the lineup and you revisit that on a regular basis, then you won't get off, off right. track so much and start chasing these crazy things. Sometimes it's enlightening to go back to some of that original write-up and go, oh, we should have been doing oh, this all yeah. along. Oh, yeah. It's it's important because you get off track. All right. So uh, as we move here, we're running out of time here. we got a little bit of time left here. So point number seven, as we continue to talk about some mistakes that church boards tend to make, involving the board in day-to-day -day ministry decisions. And that includes, of course, purchases, you know, that are previously approved from the budget. And again, kind of touches on the point we said right. earlier. Uh, you, you're not focusing on the big picture. So, and a lot of this has to do with, you know, the board wants to come in. There's a tendency to, uh, or a temptation to become armchair quarterbacks. And like, well, how come you didn't have this guy do that? And, how right. and so they start stepping up and starting to basically get into the role of what the pastor should be doing, right. and, which the pastor should be directing the day-to-day -day, um, activities of what's yeah. going on within the church. Or at least the executive pastor should be. Yeah. Oh, in, yeah. In, in conjunction with the senior pastor. Right. Yeah. So, but the yeah. board sometimes will go, well, let's, let me start helping manage your church for you. Yeah. And we'll, we'll yeah. manage this church from the board, which is always yeah. a bad idea. Yeah. Or from yeah. The and committee. I've, I've run across this all the time and it's just, yeah, just drives you nuts. Uh, so yeah, the board needs to embrace, you know, primary role, modeling spiritual leadership to the congregation. Uh, these are just kind of generic things, provide encouragement and accountability to the lead pastor, you know, protecting the, the mission of your church, help protect the vision, the values of your church. You're, you know, the, the leadership team, the board, whatever you want to call it, they are there to, to support what's happening. Uh, and then, you know, here's one of the things that I had somebody ask me recently. They said, you know, should, should people on my board, should they be significantly involved in their financial commitment? And my, my answer to that was yes, <laughs> because if they're not leading in, in areas like giving, you're, you're barking right. up the wrong tree, right. you know? You're, you, you, people that are on your board should be, I'm not saying they have to be rich. And, and, and the other side of the coin is you don't want to just put somebody on the board because they're big givers. You know, that goes back to point number one. Right. You know, we, we don't want to just put somebody on because they have money and because they give a lot. They need to be qualified, you know, with their giftings and their biblical qualifications. But they certainly should be giving. They should be practicing stewardship. Right. Uh, if they they're should not. Be, right. If they're not, somebody needs to sit down and talk to somebody because right, cause there, there's some qualifications for for these board members, and that's, I mean, commitment to the church is is one, and that's going to show up through their giving as well. It should be, yeah, it should be the whole package, right? And and and, uh, but I've you know I've run across this, you know, people on on boards that, that and it's yeah, a leadership are, team, and they're not leading, right? They're not giving, they're not leading, they're not involved in ministry, they're and, just sitting there, yeah, like a bump on the log. And back to my you know previous experience, it was actually it fit in, it was it was a an influential, fairly wealthy person that didn't have the right spiritual giftings that got in onto the leadership team mainly because oh let's get this guy and he can probably open some doors for us because he's you know a, a successful businessman in my right. community and he never should have been there and he got some undue influence and tried to steer the church in one way and the. Spiritual leadership was going, no, that's not right. And right. it resulted in the split. Yeah. 
So it's all, and by the way, getting back to the giving thing for leaders, you know, um, we put together last year what we called a pledge campaign for my church. And, and because we, we had this startup funds and we're draining the startup funds. And so we needed a budget for the next year. So we decided to put together a pledge campaign. A pledge campaign was simply, hey, here's our expenses. You know, we, we, here's what we need folks, you know, can pray, consider what you would be giving to the next year, you know, and just let us know it's not binding or anything. Just give us, you know. And so before we did all that, one of the things I brought up was, you know, the first people that need to make these pledges are us, the leadership team. <laughs> We have got to make the pledges first. Mm -hmm. And then we actually showed, we actually put a big pie chart up on a screen in the church and said, okay, here's, here's, here's what the leadership team has pledged to give. Okay. Uh, here's our expenses. And here's what the rest that we need to come up with as a congregation. Mm -hmm. So I'm, Again, it's it starts with the leadership team. All right. The leadership team needs a lead in every area, including giving. All right. I'm beating All right. So here. The, the number eight actually kind of goes back to number three a little bit here, but it's requiring yeah. number eight's requiring a unanimous vote or a simple majority to make decisions. Right. Yeah. So in either case, one person can control decision making, and so the goal should be to achieve a consensus with everybody committed to the decisions that they've made. And this is everybody on the board. On the board. On right. the board. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this not, is, not the it, congregation. Right. So in a way, this team. is different from the, yeah. the, the leadership board. team. The leadership team or the board, whatever you want to call them. Uh, some people hate to use the term board. They just want to use leadership. But whatever. You, you've you got, you know, when, we, when you make a decision, in my opinion, you, there needs to be Consensus. Discussion and right. consensus. And, you know, it doesn't mean somebody can't disagree. Right. Let's hear why you disagree. Maybe you're right. Maybe we're wrong, you know. Or maybe, you know what, we're just going to have to talk this through and maybe you don't feel great about it, but you're willing to go along yeah, with it. Right. You know, which is, that happens and it's okay. Sometimes you disagree, but you still want to support the church as much as you can or even to support the decision, even though you may say, I don't really think it's the greatest thing in the world, but I'll... I'll, you know, unless it's something really just radically, right? you know, goes against your conscience or something. And, you know? and I was part of a church that was, um, I don't know if it was a part of their statement of faith, but it was all around um, arriving at consensus and not making it a vote. Right. So they wanted to make sure that there was a consensus of the spirit, I guess, leading right. where they needed to go. There are legal things, though, like, I call legal things, but like in your board, your board meetings, you know, when you take the minutes, there needs to be something, you know, said about, okay, this decision was made, you know, it was uh, unanimous, right. or whatever. Or there was dissension and yeah. Yeah. Something where you've got something. So I understand that where there needs to be some kind of, you know, I don't know if I want to say voting, I guess voting at times, but there, there needs to be some, some conversation, you know, and not just ramrodding something through. Or, or, or somebody not just saying, well, I hate this decision, right. I'm out of here, you and know. I, I think it's not on our list, but one of the things that you know, we could probably add for 11 is is not um, following what Roger's Rules is. Of, oh. uh, is that what it's called? Roger's <laughs> I, Rules? I think it is. I can't remember now. Yeah. Roger's Rules and board meetings or whatever. Yeah, or uh, meetings. And yeah. so, yeah, we tended to gravitate towards the whole make a motion discussion, yeah. you know, uh, all in favor kind of thing right. just to just to have some structure to how the meeting progresses and yeah which i mean we're going to get into this a little bit this next point right she's talking yeah. about allowing people to spend more time in meetings than in ministry right yeah so the rogers rules will help get you through those meetings a little quicker yeah yeah the more complex your structure gets the less church health and growth happens usually so on the other hand there's a direct correlation between mobilizing people in ministry and the overall health of the church. So my point here is uh, get people involved in ministry. That's the bottom line. You know, don't get so tied up in board meetings. And and I've been through the, some of these long, long meetings and it's just, it just, the church is unhealthy if you just keep doing that over and over again. Yeah. You want to get people involved. They so, need time to do to to be in ministry, not necessarily a whole a whole bunch of time right. sitting around the table. So I mean, just little tidbits, kind of to get you through these meetings quickly in an orderly fashion. 
You want to have an agenda, right? You want to have the agenda shared with people. You want to have in advance, uh, in advance, yes. Yeah. And you want to have action items that would be due at the meeting, mm-hmm. acted on prior to the meeting. Yeah. So people come prepared, right, to the meeting to make this. Uh, decisions and uh, rather than rehashing you know you want to yeah. yeah old things so yeah. so have an agenda make sure that the action items are assigned and followed up on and, and handled prior to the meeting yeah we you know what what my church does is we 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 send out an agenda usually a week or so before uh and we do we have all that stuff on there agenda items and we have the, the, the minutes we actually take minutes and you should take minutes uh, to some degree, some way you should have, you should record the minutes to your board meetings. Mm-hmm. And we do, we have the minutes there and everything. So when we start, we, we get right down to business and we don't even sometimes read the minutes. If everybody's got them in advance, we just say, Hey, everybody read the minutes earlier, you know, whatever. And if everybody did, then we go, any questions, anything need to be modified, change. If so, we do it. If not, we move on. Sounds we, you like know. you've been in some of my board meetings. <sighs> Gosh. Well, that's exactly how we do. Some of them have done well, and others have uh, not, so not well, done huh? so well. So I'm speaking out of pain here, but, <laughs> but we're doing really well now. All right. So uh, the last one, the last point is so that was number nine. Now we're on yeah, number ten. Number ten. The last point on some mistakes that that church boards can make sometimes is meeting without the senior pastor or the senior leader. The reason I bring that up is, uh, and even if your senior leader isn't necessarily the uh, what do you call it the the the, uh, the chairperson of the board that doesn't matter the, the the senior leader is is the guy that represents the staff he he's doing these things he or she is doing these he things he should know what the day to day is right. going on yeah have and that info I understand there's exceptions the person's on vacation maybe the pastor's on vacation you got to meet okay you got to meet whatever but to do it continually uh, you just get off track I, we had a situation where our board was meeting our senior pastor works during the week and sometimes is out of the out of town during the week and so uh, a lot of times he couldn't make the board meetings well, we're having these meetings and uh, he's not there to represent things and it's just i just watch the whole thing you know getting off track and i'm like we've got yeah, to have him let's here we have this meeting again when the pastor can be here right? right they started having that i assume well and 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 really you know the senior pastor for the most part usually has bring brings a lot of vision brings a lot of, you know, overall big picture mm-hmm. to, to things. And so he or she needs to be present as much as possible. And and plus it, it just helps with the relationships with everybody, you know. So anyhow, we're out of time. All Thank right. you, folks, for your time. And uh, if you have, and again, if you have anything to add to this or take away from it, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Support at streamingchurch.tv. We are in iTunes or on iTunes. Uh, look for Church Solutions Podcast. Subscribe. Mm-hmm. And get it every week or uh, give us a review and give us a review, maybe. All of the above. NewMediaMinistries.tv, little kind of little blog we have that has uh, this uh, this on here as well as other things that we have about our companies. Uh, where else are we at? We're, YouTube for the audio. Yeah, YouTube audio versions, YouTube. Look for StreamingChurch.tv, Church Solutions Podcast. And we're all over the map. So, uh If you can find us, then you'll like us. If you don't like us, then you won't listen. (laughs) All right. So I'm Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. And we'd love to hear from you. Have yourself a great day. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. We will catch you again next time. Have yourself a great day.